Every year this carnival happens about 30 minutes outside of Atlanta, and every year I photograph it, but today we're going to try to take the nostalgic vibes of this carnival to the next level with a one-stop Promus filter. I've never used one of these before, but I'm excited to see how the dreamy, diffusing effect of this filter impacts my photography. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. YouTube, what is good? So I have a fun video planned for y'all today. Last year, actually I think it was two years ago at this point, I made a video talking about the Tippin Black Pro Mist filter and I called it the most underrated filter for photographers. I still love mine, I use it all the time. I have one on my lens right now while I'm filming. That's how I get this glowy, hellacious effect in this apartment. But I wanted to see what would happen if we took this to level 1000. Every time I'm using a Pro Mist, I think to myself, you know, we could push this a little farther what if we took it to the extreme and today we're gonna to find out what happens when you put a one-stop Promus filter on your lens. This is a filter that is typically used more for portraits. Vulandis on YouTube, who I think is probably the best YouTube photography video person out there. His videos are amazing. He uses this a lot for portraits, and I wanted to see could the same effect, the hellacious glowiness that you get from this filter, help out my street photos and my more lifestyle photos. So today we're gonna find out. I did three different tests with it. If you wanna copy the looks on my photos in today's video, you can download my preset module from evanramp.com and then you can follow the formulas that are listed next to each photo. I don't do traditional presets because I want the viewers of my channel to be able to copy each look directly and not just rely on a one size fits all preset. So the formulas are listed. You can go check that out at evanramp.com. Like I said, let's get to this first test. So there we go, that was pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie though, one issue that I found with this filter was it kind of messed up the exposure like metering that I was having in the camera. The EVF a lot of times looked darker than it should, it looked more overexposed than it should, but I think that that's just an impact or a result, excuse me, of having this filter on the lens. Obviously your highlights are gonna be a little bit more blown out and the camera is gonna be more sensitive to this massive bloom of light that's happening. So there were a couple times where I made photos that were a little bit too dark, but in my opinion, I think those came out great, and I think the glowy effect of the One Stop Promus filter really added to the overall feel and atmosphere of these images, especially the colorful ones. I think it helped it. I don't think it was too much at all. It looked solid, especially on the Leica Q with this amazing lens that's attached to it, but I wanted to test it further, so I went out and did some more spring daytime type photos around Atlanta. All of the trees are blooming here. It looks really pretty. It's one of my favorite times of year, so I thought we could get some real classic nostalgia type vibes with these images, and I thought this filter would just send those to the next level.
And that's pretty much exactly what happened. I think most of these look really good. I think the glow effect, considering it was warmer and there was already a lot of pollen in the air, is borderline too much on these photos, especially the one of the bush with the Range Rover. I look at that and think, we're pushing the limits here. This is one of those moments where I'm thinking we're having too much of a good thing with the One Stop Promise filter. The effect looks cool on some other shots, but not on every single one. And this kind of illuminates a concern that I have with keeping a filter like this on your lens all the time, is what if you find yourself in a scenario where you make an image that would look better without the filter and you essentially ruin it because that effect is baked into the file. So it's up to you. You're running kind of a risk, especially in a situation like I was in when I was making that segment of the video, if you're gonna have a lot of highlights and you're gonna have a lot of changes in light, you might find yourself in a spot where the glow effect is just way, way too much. But I wanted to test this one more way before I gave a final verdict. I wanna do some night photography with it. This is a pretty quick test. I just took it up to Pont City Market, but the photos surprised me. So while I edit these photos, I want to thank our sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. So how many of y'all have something new you're trying to learn in 2022? Skillshare is the perfect place to get started from photography to illustration to graphic design, freelance, self-help. It doesn't matter what this new interest is. Skillshare can help you make 2022 a new year of learning, growth, and connection through creativity. Two classes that I find particularly interesting interesting as I'm continuing to build and grow this YouTube channel is Finding Fulfillment Using Pivots to Power Your Creative Career by Emma Gannon and YouTube Success Script Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. One of the biggest tech YouTubers out there has his own classes on Skillshare that you can learn from. So Skillshare has a special offer for everyone viewing today's video. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description on today's video will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. That's the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So all those came out amazing and it's crazy how efficient I was making these photos. I think I was there for about 15, 20 minutes and this Promus filter allowed me to make some images that I hadn't been able to make in the past. The main ones being that candy stand. I've walked past that plenty of times. I've tried to make photos of it before because I love the retro feel to it. But every time I made an image digitally, it just felt too sharp and too stale. It just didn't really capture the vibe that I wanted to. But with the Promus filter on there, you get that glowy retro effect, and I think it helps enhance that particular image a lot. And there's also the photo of the person walking down the street with the pont sign that almost appears to be a foggy, moody night. And that's another example of this filter really helping out an image and that effect really adding to the overall feeling of the photo. I think this is the test where this filter shined the most. Obviously, at night you're gonna have the most contrast so all of the glow effect is gonna happen around any external lights which is probably what you want from something like this using it during the day or using it at dusk like I did in the first two tests you run into more tricky situations where sometimes you don't want the effect baked into the photo like I said but my final verdict on the day is that I would definitely use this in more controlled environments similar to how Vulandis uses it with portraits he knows what he's trying to do it can see exactly how the 
filter is affecting the photos or use it at night because you have a better understanding of exactly how the filter is gonna affect the image. I think it's much more of a wild card and can be a negative when you're using it on day-to-day -day stuff. But this was a lot of fun to do. This was one of my favorite videos in a while. I was really inspired making these images and this is definitely something that I'm gonna continue to use in the future.